debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Windsor West. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today on this bill, C-56, uh, an act to amend the Exercise Tax Act and the Competition Act. And I'll get into those two components. Um, it's been an interesting debate in the House, uh, watching various land barons get up and talk about affordable living uh, for other people that have to rent from them. Uh, but I can tell you, Madam Speaker, is that the mixture of our market right now has brought us to the situation, and that mixture of the market was abandoned by then Paul Martin uh, when we lost our housing initiatives. Uh, and since then, there's been a recovery process that's been brutal. Um, and that lack of stock has led to the problems we have right now in the free market system. And on top of that, Madam Speaker, in communities like Windsor and Tecumseh and Essex around myself, there's been a lot of building that's taken place, but there've been more affluent homes that have been more on the higher end of the market for the profit margins to be higher. And that's been one of the problems is we've lost cooperative and also other type of housing units that really should have been built during that time frame. So even when we've had increase of housing stock, it hasn't led to the things that we want. So here we are today, at least trying to do something on it. I mean, it's not a great bill, but at least it's something coming forward that we actually have some unanimity in the House of Commons with. The GST is something even the Conservatives say they think they could um, agree with, which is ironic because the Conservatives actually, when they go back in history, they brought in the GST under Brian Mulroney, and they actually brought in the HST under Stephen Harper. In fact, we are still paying for that because when we brought in the HST, they had to grease a couple provinces to come on board, and we had to borrow billions of dollars, which we're still paying interest on that. I've actually done an updated parliamentary budget office and also a House of Commons Library of Parliament uh, paper to always update every year about how much interest we're paying uh, from Harper bringing in the HST at that time and borrowing billions of dollars Billions of dollars we borrowed to bring in a new tax on Canadians. So when the Conservatives talk about taxation, they need to keep their history uh, in check. And it's at least good that they're owning up to the GST issue and these regressive tax that have been put on place of Canadians. Now, we even had an election at one point in time where the Liberals and Conservatives actually talked about getting rid of the GST. And here we can see it still hasn't happened in a fullness. But at least in this instance, we're actually going to support it. And that's the first part, the excise tax waving it on for new builds. And there is a problem, though, that we have to monitor with this, is whether or not those savings are going to be passed on to consumers being renters and also other people in the market purchasing those homes. There needs to be real incentives to build um, the homes that really many people actually enjoy to this day were called wartime housing, where after the Second World War, smaller units with two to three bedrooms were built that were affordable for veterans. And those units have now been either built additional components to them or they stayed the same, and they're still very much part of a good market for many, many people, including in my riding where we had a lot of veterans serve. And just as we had a lot of veterans serve most recently, even in Afghanistan and other theaters, where Windsor, Ontario has always done its part, going back to the War of 1812, and even actually contributed in terms of uh, support for all kinds of different um, wars and conflicts and peace at that time. And so our housing stock that we still have from World War II has never been followed up on, and that's a real issue with regards to our veterans and those housing units, thank goodness that they're there. One of the things I would not point out that's really important is the new residential rebate, um, when we d does get going, it's going to probably have to get through the Senate, and so we're in more delays. So when we're looking at an opportunity right now to actually get something done, we're probably looking at the new year uh, for this. And so we have a housing crisis right now, and so what's the response of this chamber? Is this at least a modest improvement, but we don't even have everybody in this chamber that's willing to support and get this bill done as quickly as possible. And so we're just going to continue to inflate an, uh, the problem because it's going to take some time to get through. The other amendment to this bill is really important, the Competition Act. And, and I, as I mentioned earlier, the Competition Act um, in a previous debates needs massive updating, which I'm uh, really pleased my leader, the member for Burnaby, um, uh, is, is tabled, has tabled a, a legislation to actually fix the Competition Act in some respects. This is going to have a few components too. It's going to establish a framework for the Minister of Industry to direct the Commissioner of Competition to conduct an inquiry into the state of competition in the market. That's really important. Permanent, um, the competition tribunal make certain orders to agreements or arrangements that would prevent or lessen competition. And two, uh, another one is repeal the exception in Section 96 of the Act involving efficiency gains brought about by mergers. So that one I know is a little bit more technical, but basically the efficiency gains argument is really outdated in Canada. We can actually prove that um, there's going to be less competition, and the Competition Bureau can actually prove that if there's a merger, but at the same time, uh, the merger can go ahead at the expense of people 
just because there's actually going to be better profit margins. So we need to get rid of that altogether. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting about this situation that we have right now is that we have both conservative and liberal governments that have allowed constant mergers to take place and the loss of Canadian jobs. I mean, we have the Lowe's uh, takeover of Rona, um, where we've seen that has actually backfired in many respects, and some of the Ronas are now back being opened up. We had Target take over Zeller's, and then Target closed all of its stores. And Zeller's, by the way, Madam Speaker, at the time of the takeover, was the only department store making money and actually had benefits to its workers, and the workers were paid about 12% more than other department stores. And it was a Canadian-owned operation, and the government, under the Liberals, allowed the takeover to take place. We lost all those stores. Target closed up in Canada and moved back south of the border. Complete, utter disaster. There's been others. We've watched uh, Staples, uh, sorry, not Staples, the Future Shop be taken over by Best Buy. Lack of competition now in the electronics sector. Future Shop was a Canadian icon store, gone. Now we have the Best Buy option and you have Amazon online and very little competition when it comes to those measures. I could go on and on for some of these different things that have been allowed to be taken over, um, basically to lack of competition, but I do want to highlight a couple things um, with regards to um, the grocery store uh, retail industry, which is another part of the things that we're fighting for. And this is going to help in that situation as well. When we had the CEOs of the grocery stores come before us in front of industry committee, and we had the study that took place, we questioned them, and unbelievably, on the same day, all three of the major chains cut their hero pay during the pandemic on the very same day. And that's unbelievable. You still had the issues out there. You have, right now, in the retail sector, several different things taking place. In fact, if you look at some of the media stories coming out, I think CTV and Mike Drolet uh, did a good piece uh, that was on, um, you can watch it on, on TV, uh, on theft in the retail market, um, how it's changing, and how some stores are closing, not only just in the United States, but other places, but also potentially here, and they're also changing the way that the stores look and handle some of those things. And the reason I bring that up, Madam Speaker, because it's not a victimless crime. It rises the price of all groceries in terms of theft and the types of behavior that takes place, but also the same workers that were the heroes during the pandemic have to face increased complicated situations at the workplace, either defending the products or feeling that they're compromised or having confrontations with different customers. But it certainly is something that's very important that's taking place. There's a culture change that's taking place um, as they face it. So these grocery store chains, when you look at the you know, obvious things that they've done in the past was fixing the price of bread. Can you imagine that? They fix the price of bread, the most important staple for children going to school and for families to survive, they actually colluded, colluded together, like the robber barons of the past, thank you, Madam Speaker, for two minutes, uh, the, the robber barons of the past, and fixed the price of bread. So there would be no, not only just lack of competition, but there's a coordinated approach on one of the basic human staples to increase prices on Canadians. And what did they do? They got a slap on the wrist from it because our current competition issues and right now our challenges are, are not there. And, and you know, the government's responded by saying, okay, we brought the CEOs to come in and say, oh, well, you at least hold the prices, hold the line. What a garbage stance that is from the government. So let's go back in history and look at some of the things that have been taking place. Even this liberal government, they had issues with their own Call, calling for corporate tax cut reductions. Until recent, they were doing that. In fact, some of their former leaders or leadership people said they didn't cut taxes quick and fast enough, and that was their competition. So these grocery store icons that enjoy monopolies in Canada have been a reduction of corporate taxes at that time, CEOs with big pay, and at the same time, at the same time, they're fixing the price of bread. And there's other types of uh, malfeasance that is going on with regards to their operations. And they've also been known, again, as I mentioned, to actually push the workers some of the hardest and, frankly, some of the most despicable ways possible. And so all three of them cancelling hero, hero pay at the same time, not only it stinks to high heaven, it tells you the disdain that they have on their workers. And they'd had no shame in this whatsoever. No shame whatsoever when they're in front of committee. Yeah, that's just the way we do business. It's okay. So, Madam Speaker, this bill right here 
is a modest improvement. It's something we can control as members right now in the House to get something done for the GST with regards to the, the uh, increase of housing and as well to increase competition in Canada because between the grocery retailers and also the telcos and others, we need competition and we need it now. Thank you, Madam Speaker.